So this weekend has been pretty crazy uh, as far as Xbox news, if you want to call it that, rumors, uh, a lot going on, I'm sure most of you already heard, but there's been, and as you can see with the article here from Xbox era, um, there's been a lot of, where there's smoke, there's fire as far as Microsoft bringing a bunch of Xbox games to PlayStation and even Nintendo Switch, and now Recently, we've heard, you know, Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, some of these, you know, smaller games or like bigger multiplayer games that have been out for years now, you know, Microsoft trying to get some extra revenue, bring games over there, but then we've gotten reports that, hey, Starfield might come out on PS5, uh, Gears of War, hey, like, the lines are seeming very blurred as far as this whole case-by-case -case basis that Phil Spencer was talking about before, and... I don't know. We'll have to see. We got a small statement from him, but we'll get into all that. But if you guys are new to the channel and are into gaming news, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, we talk about it all here on Manta XP, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on this video. So we're going to start with the article from Xbox Era. So the title says, uh, exclusive Microsoft plans Starfield launch for PlayStation 5. So... We just skimmed through the article a little bit. It says, for many weeks now, rumors have persisted regarding Microsoft's intentions to release a number of first-party games, namely Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves on rival platforms. According to our sources, who have asked to remain anonymous because they were not authorized to talk about company plans, that list of games also includes Bethesda Game Studios' Starfield. Now, obviously, we don't know who these sources are, but it says... They want to remain anonymous because um, they're not authorized to talk about company plans. So obviously this is someone on the inside at Microsoft. That's, you know, very apparent just from that. Um, so, you know, so according to the sources, we understand that currently Microsoft are planning to launch for Starfield on PlayStation 5 post the release of the already announced Shattered Space expansion for Xbox and PC, which is on target to arrive at some point later this year. We've also been informed that Microsoft have made additional investment into PlayStation 5 dev kits to support ongoing development efforts, adding further fuel to the fire. Now, this is, I don't know, The there's a few ways to look at it. The first thing is that, you know, some people don't want any Xbox exclusives. You know, we don't want Microsoft playing nice, you know, and all this kind of stuff. However, you know, as a consumer and an investor into, um, you know, the Xbox ecosystem, you have to realize, like, to keep funding Game Pass and all these things, subscriptions have kind of stagnated. The, you know, revenue that they're getting from Game Pass and just people aren't really buying games, especially first party games on Xbox at all, or they're waiting for stuff to come to Game Pass. Like, it's the money has to come from somewhere, right? So, putting certain games on multi-platforms it it kind of seems the way to go in xbox's strategy starfield does seem kind of crazy because this was supposed to be that you know once in a generation skyrim in space type of game it didn't end up being like that there was a lot of you know mixed reviews and things like that but this is a a big step but the other way to look at it is like hey this was a studio that Microsoft acquired, you know, Bethesda, they used to have all their games, you know, Fallout, Elder Scrolls was multi-platform before. So them having the game on Xbox day one, and then maybe a year or so later coming out on PlayStation. Again, I personally, I don't like it, even though I own all the consoles, I am more of an Xbox fan than anything. And I would like, you know, Microsoft to really, you know, stand on what they've been trying to do and say, like, hey, we can make exclusives, too, and bring more people to the, the ecosystem. I don't say platform anymore because it's, it's, it's expanded outside of that. Um, but I did want to go through some tweets, too, because, listen, it's been going crazy. This... Take with a grain of salt, this, like, I think people are going a little overboard. So this is people that are selling their Xbox series and picking up PS5s and stuff like that. And it's like, we haven't even gotten a formal announcement yet. I think this is going too far. Like, to me, even if they do go full multiplayer, if you already own an Xbox, I say there's no point of getting rid of it. Like, just keep it. You still have Game Pass. There's not going to be Game Pass on PlayStation, most likely. So I think... Like, it doesn't make sense for people to be doing stuff like this. 
Um, we got this. The funny thing is a few days ago, we got this quarterly uh, earnings report. Uh, so Q2, well, fiscal Q2 for Microsoft uh, for 2024 said they made $62 billion and gaming has now become their third biggest, you know, largest part of their uh uh, largest part of their business. I didn't even know Microsoft owned LinkedIn. That's crazy. But you know, things things were up. Uh, device revenue was down, but it says like gaming revenue was up forty nine percent. Xbox hardware revenue was up three percent. Xbox content services was up sixty one percent. Now a lot of this could also be based on obviously the acquisitions of uh, Activision Blizzard and all that. But still, like. The money is coming in. The problem is Xbox has uh, Xbox has invested over like a hundred billion dollars over the last five years um, into these acquisitions and things like that. So we talk about Bethesda, you know, obviously um, Activision Blizzard. That right there is almost eighty billion. Then you got the other, you know. Uh, other studios and things like that that they've been you know obsidian all these other studios so they need to make not just their money back but a profit like you don't invest a hundred billion dollars into something unless you expect to get i don't know 20 billion back in profit or something crazy like that and you know it's listen it's it's interesting but after all these tweets and stuff, we did get Phil Spencer here and said, 11 million views already. Um, he said, we're listening and we hear you. We've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our fi- our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. And now a lot of people took this as like, hey, he's kind of confirming everything because it's like, you know, you're seeing the chatter, these leaks and all this. And he's like, hey, listen, we're going to have a business meeting <laughs> next week. And it's just like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm sticking with Xbox for now. Like, I don't have a reason to leave. I like the ecosystem. I like Game Pass. I like, you know, I like what they're doing. I like the slate of games they have coming. And... It's just, I don't know. I don't have a reason. Like, I don't want to jump out the window and just, like, switch over again. Like, everything's going to take time. You know, we've been seeing, they've kind of been gearing up to this. They've been talking about the ecosystem, wanting Game Pass on every screen possible. And, you know, we've lost the console war and it's not about console sales anymore and, you know, we don't even make money off of the console. Our main reason for selling you the console is to sell subscriptions and to sell software and things like that. And that's that's that seems to be what it is now. Now, the interesting thing that I've been thinking about and I've heard a few other people talking about it is if they do this, what does that mean for other third party support? You know, if if Xbox becomes like a third party type publisher but they still have their own platform. Like, how's that work with other third parties? Like, if, like, is it only Game Pass? Like, is it, like, how does it work? Like, I feel like if I'm Sega or any of these other company, Capcom, all these other publishers, and I want to give, put games as many places as I can, if you don't have an actual sustainable, like, platform, like, I know, like, you could tell me, hey, this amount of people buy our games on this many systems because at some point they're not going to be throwing away or throwing out all these game pass deals they're not going to be throwing out 3 million 15 million whatever they're paying for people to put these games on game pass day one and that even that the day one third party games i feel like that's going to slow down tremendously uh in the very near future and we'll hear about that i'm sure next week but like what does that mean for them? Because they're not going to just as, as a publisher. Yes, money is great, but you also want to build your brand. You want to get your game in as many places as you can build up your name and things like that. So for Microsoft to kind of shy away from that and just care about putting their their games and focus on first party more so and putting it on as many screens. I don't know who's to say. So there's, 
There's a lot. The the one thing we could say for sure is that a big shift is coming, something we haven't seen in gaming probably ever. Um, I know people are trying to make comparisons to Sega and everything like that, but I do not think this is like a Sega situation. You know, Sega, they just left console gaming as a whole, just went a third party, you know, third party and just published their games. You know, Microsoft has grabbed up a bunch of studios. They also have their own ecosystem and things like that. I don't think they're necessarily leaving quote unquote console gaming. I just think they're expanding it. Like if we look at this picture right here, you know, this kind of shows us, you know, what Xbox has been planning. You know, it says, Hey, you could play on PC, customize your experience. You could play on Xbox one S or series S, which is next gen, but affordable price. Then you got Xbox Series X, which is, you know, most powerful console. Then you got cloud gaming and streaming on mobile. So it's this this has been the rise been on the wall since the last, you know, probably four or five years. It's just now it's all kind of coming together. It's kind of interesting that they're deciding to do this in the middle of a generation. I don't know. Something must have happened after acquisition. We've seen the layoffs, we've seen everything. There's been a lot, so it is what it is like again companies going to do what they're going to do makes sense for them is it necessarily consumer friendly we'll have to see but at the end of the day they're at the stakeholders uh you know beck and call and at their you know disposal and everything so they kind of got to do whatever they want to do so everyone xbox fans hold your head high we'll uh We'll get through this. I don't think everybody needs to just, you know, necessarily jump ship. It is what it is if you do want to, but we'll just have to see next week. And I'll definitely cover whatever that business meeting or whatever Phil Spencer wants to tell us uh, next week. So appreciate you guys. Uh, that's all I got for this. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section below. Check out my other videos. Definitely leave a like on this video and subscribe if you have not already. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.